And uh, yeah, it is recording. Okay, great. So uh, this is the Blackboard course site that you should see uh, on your screens. You've got um, a couple of different syllabi uh, for the undergraduates. Uh, this one's your syllabus. Uh, we have one graduate student in the audience and then one who couldn't make it. Uh, that's your syllabus. And then we have the course schedule, uh, sort of calendar of events, copies of my lecture slides. Uh, this right here, uh, if you haven't already used it, it's a link to my video lectures. Uh, so I won't be giving formal lectures during these Zoom meetings. These are going to be Q&A and discussion of the homework. I should say student-led discussion of the homework. Uh, but you'll, you'll still need to watch these videos um, uh, to get the lecture content uh, for the course. And then uh, hopefully everybody found the, uh, the Zoom meeting uh, link. Uh, so I'm going to just pop open the undergraduate syllabus real quick here. So, uh, you know, if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Maddox. Uh, we'll be working together this semester for PCHEM. Um, I'm not having any office hours uh, in person this semester, uh, but you can always reach me uh, during the week uh, via Zoom. Uh, instead of trying to call me on the telephone, you should use my email. Uh, that's the best way to get a hold of me. Um, here's our course standard, uh, you know, from the course catalog. Um, kind of description of what you need to take the course and what the course is about. Uh, it may be a little outdated at this point, the, the summary, but um, anyway, we'll, we'll be covering thermodynamics and kinetics in the course as well as transport theory. Uh, one thing that's very important for the course is that you have a copy of the required textbook, um, whether you've uh, purchased it through the bookstore or, or gotten it from Amazon or wherever you got a copy of the, the textbook, you do need a copy of the required textbook because that's what your homework is gonna be based upon. My lectures follow the textbook very closely. And so I, I follow um, Atkins format uh, uh, for this course. And so you do need a copy of that. Um, in the past, I've made this, this book required uh, this conceptual guide to thermodynamics. Um, I think if you're a chemist and you're going to be pursuing a career in chemistry, this would be a really good book to pick up. If this is going to be your last uh, sort of dance with thermodynamics, then you could probably skip it. Um, but it's a really good book. Uh, it really explains the concepts of thermodynamics that tend to get lost when you're reading a traditional textbook. And so I, I think this is a, is a very good resource to, to have. Uh, I use it all the time. And you'll see, you'll see figures and discussion topics um, from, from the recommended textbook in, in my lecture videos and, and in sort of the ideas that I present. Uh, I'm not going to take us through the, uh, the learning objectives in detail. It's basically this is a calculus-based approach to thermodynamics and kinetics. We'll also cover a little bit of transport theory. Uh, the, main, the main thing is to um, be able to uh, qualitatively and quantitatively demonstrate proficiency with the material that we cover. I have a much longer list of learning objectives in the schedule where the homework is listed. Okay, so there it's kind of point by point what you should be able to do uh, after uh, studying this material um, but I don't I don't include all those details in the in the syllabus um, reading and homework so uh, basically for each lecture period there's going to be a section of the book that you need to read those sections vary from eight to 15 pages of text and then there's a homework assignment for each for each of those sections which will have anywhere from 10 to uh, 15, 15 or so questions or problems that you have to, to take a look at. Um, when I say um, th this semester, since I'm not co collecting paper-based assignments, um, when, we, when I collect the homework, the homework will be presented by you guys 
in this uh, in these Zoom meetings. So we'll be having, generally speaking, they're going to be informal. Okay, it's it's mostly participation based. Um, when we start one of these Zoom sessions where we do have an active homework assignment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on individual students to discuss uh, the questions, the problems. Uh, we'll work through it as we encounter difficulties, like I couldn't figure that one out or that's one I didn't get to, et cetera, then I'll, I'll call on somebody else until we get a solution to that particular problem. Uh, basically, it's the way I'm using the homework. It's a way to keep you engaged in um, the material. Let me let me tell you my philosophy about homework for this course. Um, I, I'm not I'm not I don't really care about what you can do. Okay, that sounds strange, right? It's not the problems that you can do easily that I'm interested in. It's the ones that you can't figure out. It's it's the places where you're having trouble. That's what I want to address in these meetings. So so coming into a, to one of these zoom meetings and I call on you and you you try to present the problem and you're having trouble with it. That's what I'm after. And I'm not after it to embarrass you. I'm after it to make us stronger in the material. So in order to get better, in order for me to help you get better, I need to uncover the weak spots. Okay. And so that's, that's the purpose of this. And so uh, I know it can be nervous to, to present something that you're not so sure about, um, you know, in an open setting, but, but just keep in mind the way that I'm looking at it. And I hope you can adopt it this way too, that the purpose of talking about the material is really to get it wrong the first time so that we can then figure out how to get it right. Okay. And so if, if we look at it like that, that it's practice and not, you know, not like um, I have to have this done correctly the first time, then I think it'll be not as um, sort of nerve wracking to, to go through these uh, homework sessions. So it's meant to be informal. Uh, it's meant to be a discussion. It's meant for us to learn something, learn from our mistakes um, as we go. So I, I hope, does anybody have any questions about that aspect of it? I will talk a little bit more about it um, when I get to the schedule, but I'm, I'm happy to field any questions about it now. I've done these before, not over Zoom, but in face-to-face -face meetings and um, It'd be more fun face to face, but it's usually kind of, I mean, I wouldn't call it exciting, but it's, it's a lively session, people making comments and so forth. And so it usually worked out quite well. Uh, so, so hopefully you're not feeling um, anxious about, about presenting homework problems. It's, I'll be there, you know, if you're struggling or something like that, I'll, I'll be helping you along. So, okay. Uh, uh, the next item on the schedule is uh, involves Mathematica software. Uh, has anybody used Mathematica before? If you could hit the yes button on your on your little thingy, whatever this is called. No, oh, looks like one, two, two people. Um, so Mathematica is a great uh, co uh, computational resource for for solving math problems and numerical problems and things like that. Um, I've used it for uh, quite a while now at this point. Um, I'm going to be providing some formal Mathematica training in the lab uh, section. And so I'll be showing you how to solve simple problems and then I'll show you how you can use Mathematica to help you solve calculus problems. For example, finding a derivative of a function or integrating a function. I'll show you features like plotting and so forth um, and, and other other aspects of Mathematica that I think would be useful to you in the course. Um, I highly encourage you to use it or to learn how to use it, uh, particularly if you're going into the more physical sciences in your career, um, or if you expect that you'll be doing data analysis, um, you can think of it as an alternative to Excel in that regard. Um, if you are in the lab, then you will have some assignments using Mathematica. And so I encourage you to visit the, I should say you should, visit the WKU Software Center and download a copy of Mathematica for your home PC or your home Mac or your laptop. 
Um, it does take a little while to download, so, um, so be prepared for that. Make sure you're on a good network uh, when you attempt to do that. Um, you wouldn't want to download that, um, you know, using your, uh, you know, like a data, like your data plan for your, for your cell phone, if you have a hotspot or something like that. So, um, so why don't you try to pick up, uh, Mathematica, preferably today, uh, because that way when we, um, well, I should say preferably this week. That way, next week, when I start the Mathematica training in the lab, you'll have a copy available on your, on your computer that you're logging into. Um, so just for your reference, um, uh, and I'll probably remind you of this at the end, uh, the lab sessions, the, the first three weeks are gonna be via Zoom. Uh, uh, so we'll have an introduction to the lab tomorrow, and then we'll have two weeks via Zoom of Mathematica, and then we'll start, we'll do a physical, a physical lab on the fourth week uh, of class. Questions about Mathematica? If you just type in WKU Software Center, it should take you to a place where you can download Mathematica. The student version of it. Um, I've got several exams throughout the course. You'll be taking these via Blackboard. Um, it will require you to upload a PDF of, of written problems, okay? So you'll need some a way of uh, scanning your work. Um, I request that those be submitted as a PDF. So if you're, if you're limited to taking pictures with your camera uh, for your scans, you need to figure out how to get those pictures into a PDF file somehow. So I would recommend uh, what I've seen in the past is people have have uh, cut and pasted the pictures into a Word document, saved it as a PDF, and then uploaded that. So there'll be, for each exam, there'll be a couple of problems, and then there's also a multiple choice section that you'll take on, on Blackboard. Um, I essentially have a, an exam for each, an exam plan for each chapter of the course that we do. We'll look at the schedule and I'll show you. Uh, what I mean by that. Um, wh when you take these exams, I'm going to request, we're just going to use the honor system here. Uh, these exams are intended to be closed book, closed notes. Um, and so you should be taking the exams without the aid of your, of your textbook, without the aid of your notes. Um, you just go through the multiple choice questions, go through the um, problems, and then upload your, your solutions to Blackboard. Um, Dr. Maddox, I yes. had a quick question. You may cover this later when we're going over the, the schedule more, um, but I noticed that like on the days that we had an exam, there was also like um, content that was being go like content listed for that day. So we'll, during our Zoom meeting, we'll like, will we still have a Zoom meeting that day that we go over like the homework questions and then will the exam be done like outside of like that normal class period or? Uh, why don't we save that question for when we look at the schedule, which will be very okay. soon. I knew that it might be a little early. I just wanted to ask it while it was on my mind. No, no, that's good. Yeah, no. well, uh, we'll look at the schedule here in a moment. Um, in terms of the, uh, the grading for the course, you know, you get credit for, for the homework. Uh, so for each uh, homework assignment that we discuss in class, I'll be giving you um, uh, points for it, uh, for participating. Uh, that'll be 25% of your grade. The exam scores will be 75% of your grade. And then I have a standard grading scale. Um, for the attendance, uh, basically in order to get credit for the homework, you have to attend the class and participate in the discussion. So hopefully that will take care of itself. Um, you know, it's also, this is a web transitioned course. And so uh, you guys are going to need to, you know, have the self-discipline to watch the lecture videos, read the textbook, and so forth on your own. Um, you guys have all sort of been around uh, a, a while, um, and so you have um, a lot of experience with, with classes, so hopefully that won't be so much of a problem for you guys. Uh, Taylor? Yes, I was, um, I had a question about the grading. Mm -hmm. Is it you saying normalized to 100? What does that mean? <laughs> that means you'll have a course percentage. 
It's like, so, so I'll be like, let's say each homework assignment's worth 10 points. And then each, each exam is kind of worth, you know, however many points are on it. Well, they each count equally. And so what you do is you just, you, you create a fraction, you know, uh, and then you scale that up to a hundred. And so, okay. so basically it's just out, uh, there's a course score out of a hundred. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the academic dishonesty, the plagiarism really comes more into play in the lab. Um, for, for the cheating, you know, I, I really want you guys working these exams on your own. So things like cheating would be using the course notes and stuff like that. Working in pairs or in groups to do the exams, that would be cheating. Um, that, so that falls under, uh, you know, the, the academic dishonesty policy and the, the penalty is fairly severe. Um, if I find out that, that there's been cheating going on, I'll assign failing grades for the course without the possibility of withdrawal. And so um, I invite you to work together on the homework. I think that's great. But the exams are meant to be individual achievement type of metrics only. And so, so please adhere to, to that uh, so that we can avoid any messy business with the Office of Student Conduct. Uh, the policies on student accessibility services in Title IX are standard across the university. So if that applies to you, please let me know. Um, any other questions about the syllabus before we turn to the schedule? Okay. Let me open up the schedule here. And so um, what, um, what I had in mind is that these are, um, what we'll do is we'll cover these topics in, in class today with the exception of the, the first one. Um, I do have a prologue lecture, a video lecture entitled Prologue. And so uh, sometime today or tomorrow, uh, I expect that you would watch that video. And then for this Thursday, you need to take a look at topic 1A. So I have a, a video or several videos on topic 1A. You need to watch those and then work the homework problems for section 1A. And then we will present those on Thursday. Okay, so, so basically you need to have the work done for section 1A completed by class on Thursday, if that makes sense. For Tuesday, you will need to have watched the videos and completed the homework for section 1B. Same thing for uh, the following th the Thursday, the 28th, read topic 1C and complete the homework for that topic. Now notice here where it says there's uh, an exam. And so the exams are due um, I think they open, let me, let me check. So, so since we're talking about the exams, here's where you would go to take the, the exams. You'd go to this tests and quizzes link. And then um, I don't know if I've deployed any of the exams uh, just yet. Have I done that? Let me go to tests here. Yeah, I don't think I've, um, I haven't actually deployed any of those tests. I have them. Uh, I think my intention was to, let's go back to the schedule here, to make those, what I'll be doing is I'll be making the exam available to you sometime on that Thursday after we have completed our discussion of chapter one. And then you will have until class time to have completed that exam. In addition to that, over the weekend, you'll also need to look at topic 2A and do the homework for 2A. So as soon as we have completed the 1C material, the exam will become available to you and that you'll have all weekend and up until Tuesday of class time where we start the new material uh, in order to take that exam. Uh, I believe it was it. Is it Chalet or Chalet? 
Uh, Charlie. And Charlie. yes, that, that answered my question. That answered your question? So okay. Yeah. And, and so that's my intention for the exams is that you'll have multiple days to, to get it together and take the exam. Um, let, let's look down here at another one. Um, this one, unfortunately, there's not a weekend uh, over the chapter break. This is actually a very short section. Um, and so after we complete that, then you'll have until class time on Thursday to complete the exam. And then, but you also need to read chapter 3A and do the 3A problems. Here you'll have this week here, March 4th, our last day for discussing chapter three. The exam will open and then you'll have until class time to complete exam three, as well as start chapter four. I've done my best to space out things that are due. Uh, so sections of homework, there's only one section of homework per due date. Uh, the pace is meant to keep everybody on task. You know, what tends to happen is that people will fall behind and they'll end up having to do like a whole chapter's of worth of homework in one night. And you know what that means. That, that means they're getting their solutions somewhere else. They're just writing them down. They're not learning anything. And so the idea here with the presentations and spacing them out is to force you to regulate your study time so that we spend, you know, so that we're, we're presenting, we're, we're thinking about the material we're supposed to be thinking about at the, all at the same time, well in advance of, of the test. Uh, at least that's the hope. The other thing I've tried to do is spread out when lab reports are due versus when exams are as, as best I could. And so um, we won't have any um, any lab reports due in the first two weeks, or actually in the first three weeks, but I will have you turn in some work on Mathematica to show me that you've, um, uh, you've mastered some of the things that I've presented to you. So there'll be, th this will be very informal, this Mathematica result. Um, and then the formal labs, for those of you that are in the lab sections, we'll do a physical experiment on February 10th. And then that will be due, um, since we had an exam the next week, I made that, that lab report due the following week instead. In the meantime, then we'll do two more labs. These unfortunately will have to be dry labs. So these will be via Zoom, where I'll be giving you data to go through. I'm sorry, it's, they're over at the, um, the AMI, which is a, it's a very nice facility. It's a large lab, but there's not room for all of us, there's like one piece of equipment that we would use and it's just not feasible to socially distance and rotate through that in any reasonable amount of time. Uh, so I will do my best to, to make it, to, to explain what, what happens in those experiments uh, when we discuss them. And then um, I'm gonna pack those into kind of um, two short lab reports. We'll talk more about the lab reports tomorrow. Uh, for those of you in the lab section. In any case, this is, this is the idea of the schedule. It's to spread out as much as possible the exams and the, um, the homework and the lab reports. Um, you may be looking right here and be concerned about this. Chapter four is rather short. It's also not that difficult of material. And so I kind of got sort of back-to-back -back exams in two weeks. Um, still uh or, or yeah that's why that's why exam four is just one week it's just a one week chapter so we'll just take that exam and get and get done with it um yes it's exam heavy but then the exams are shorter and there's less content on each exam so that's that's kind of the idea of this any questions about the calendar aspect of the schedule before i go down to the um, sections below here, which describe in more detail the reading and problem set assignments themselves. Okay, the um, 
the first part here, it, it explains essentially how the textbook works. Uh, Atkins calls his chapter focuses. Okay, they're essentially chapters and they're divided into topics, which are essentially sections. So the first focus or chapter that we'll cover, focus one, properties of gases. Uh, it's, it's mostly review, right? There's a lot on the gas laws and things like that. For example, topic 1A just goes through the ideal gas law and the different empirical gas laws and so forth. Um, and so that's, that's really review material. At the, end of the, um, at the end of the focus, there's a set of um, discussion questions, exercises, and problems. And so these are three categories of problems in the end of chapter uh, section of, the, of, of focus one. So for each topic that I've listed here, so for topic 1A, that's what we'll cover on Thursday. Each student will choose one of the discussion questions. It doesn't matter to me which one you choose. I'm hopeful that you know, we'll get each of the discussion questions covered. Uh, so you just choose one that seems most interesting to you. And then you'll want to address that in a narrative format. I would recommend actually writing something down or typing it up, whatever you prefer, um, just to you know, make, make sure that you've, you've thought about it um, uh, properly. So, so choose one discussion question. Uh, there are several exercises and the number of exercises per chapter varies depending upon or per, per topic varies depending upon the length of the topic and how many equations there are that you need to learn in that topic, etc. Um, each topic has two parts, a part A and a part B. I'm sorry, each exercise has two parts, a part A and a part B. So there's something like exercise one, part A, exercise one, part B. Uh, I'm asking the students to do part A of the exercises. And so that's each of the exercises. So if there's 10 exercises, there would be a total of 20 unique questions, do 10 of them. Uh, part A and part B are identical problems. So that's why I'm only saying you need to do half of them, right? Finally, there's a, another section, a longer section of what are called problems, okay, that are a little bit more complicated, perhaps. They're also much more interesting than the exercises. And so what I'm asking the students to do is to select two of the problems that they find interesting and work them out. And so those problems, um, you know, I mean, they, they're all centered around the topic of study, but then, you know, there'll be, there may be an environmental interest to one problem or a medical interest to a different problem, you know, more, more related to health science, et cetera, um, engineering, things like physics, things like that. So just pick two of the problems that you find interesting and then, and then work those out in detail. And so between the discussion questions the exercises and the problems that you choose, uh, everybody will get a chance to participate in the, um, in the problem solving sessions for a given chapter. Uh, they're numbered in very funny ways. And so that's what this next paragraph is about. You know, the discussion questions for, for topic 1A are labeled D1A.1 and D1A.2. You have to choose one of those to, 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 to be able to discuss. Um, this particular topic has 11 exercises. They're simple, right? Some of them are just like use the ideal gas law or use Boyle's law, things like that. So for this first one, the problems aren't very hard, this first topic. So uh, don't be afraid that uh, it looks like there's a lot of problems. There's really, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, and then the problems for topic 1A are labeled um, 2 through 8, or maybe that's a typo. Maybe that should be 1. Oh, there's probably up to, what does it say here? I guess I just selected these as, as two examples of, of problems that you would find in topic 1A. Okay, and so you want to be able to 
just pick those, pick whichever ones you want, and then um, work them out. Um, if you have extra time, I know you don't, you can work additional, additional problems beyond the minimum number. Okay, and so we'll be discussing those in Zoom. Um, it would be handy if you wanted, if you wanted, you don't necessarily have to do this, particularly not for the discussion questions, but um, uh, if you have the ability to scan your homework prior to class, that would be helpful. It's not required, but it would be helpful. I will have my, um, my little camera going and so even if you just want to talk your way through the exercise, I can write while you talk to, to help illustrate it to the class. Um, questions about the homework? Uh, this is sort like it has, it pertains to the homework, but it's not specifically about like how to do the homework questions. Um, when do you recommend watching the lecture, reading the book, and then doing the, the homework questions, or reading the book and then watching the lecture? Like, what do you think would be most beneficial for our learning process, to read the book first or watch the lecture video first? Well, it's just one section at a time, so um, I don't really have a preference. You could, you could try it different ways. Um, you could, I could imagine you just sort of skimming through the section and then watching the video and then going back while you're doing the homework, that would, that would probably work. Um, you know, it's, it, it's really student dependent. So if you are a audio visual learner, then you might benefit from watching the video first, then going back and reading the book and working the problems. If you are into textbooks, and making your own notes and things, which is a good skill, then you might prefer to read the textbook and then go through the video and then try to pick up on things you might have missed. Really, the videos are meant to be condensed. I know it doesn't seem like that when you look at how long some of them are, um, <laughs> but they're meant to, to focus on just what's interesting or just what's really important about the section. I can't include every detail, although I try, of the, um, of the sections in the, in the lecture videos. So I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have a really good answer for that. That's okay, that helped. I just didn't know if there was a way that you had recommended more over others. I don't, I don't have, a, a, have it in mind uh, either way. Um, you know, we love it when students have already read the material <laughs> prior to, to coming to class, that's almost never the case. So uh, it's, it's up to you, whatever works best. I, I definitely recommend that you do them in short succession of one another, whether you read first or watch the video first, that you kind of do that sort of back to back. Uh, when I go through the lectures, um, I, for the most part, I follow the textbook very closely. And so you could almost read while you watched if you can use the the pause button uh, for some of for for many of the sections that we cover. Any other questions of interest? Oh yeah, so f for the uh, the homeworks and stuff for the three different uh, categories of those. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just need to write those down, like on paper, or type them out, and just have them uh, like readily available for discussion. We don't have to like submit them or scan them or anything like you were saying. Well, it would probably be easier for you to discuss some, you know, some exercises and problems if you have them in digital format. That way I, you can share your screen and you can just be like, here's the problem, here's how I solved it. So it probably would be easier if you scan them, but I'm not gonna require that. Um, you definitely want to be able to, at, at minimum, walk us through the solution. And so like, let's, for example, on the next problem set, let's say you did an ideal gas law problem and I call on you to present it. It's pretty simple, right? You would just say, I use the ideal gas law, but I don't have my, but if you didn't have it presented, I would just probably use my camera 
and you'd say, I use the ideal gas law, and then I'd say, I'd either say, what's the ideal gas law, or I'd write it down. And then you would just say what you did. You'd say, oh, I solved the ideal gas law for volume, so I rearranged it this way, and then I'd write that down for you. Does that make sense, Andrew? Yeah, thank like you. I just, and, and frankly, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on simple problems like that. Like I said, like, you know, uh, we all know how to do that already, so why, why spend a lot of effort on things we already know how to do? It's generally better, more productive to spend our time on things that we don't know how to do. Other questions, concerns? Okay, well, I'm just gonna um, recommend that you, oh, this newfangled blackboard. that you um, go to the, uh, the lecture videos, watch the first one. Uh, it's really more of an organizational video and definitions. So I kind of went out on my own, or I, I, I pulled, actually I pulled ideas from the conceptual guide to thermodynamics, the, the recommended textbook. There's some content from there and there. Uh, it's, it's mostly an organization for the course. Uh, not the details like we've talked about today, but but more an organization of physical chemistry. Um, so watch that video, watch the video and read the section for topic 1A, uh, and then work the problems for 1A, and then we'll 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 go through those on Thursday. For the lab students, I'll see you guys 12:30 tomorrow, and we'll go over the format of the lab. Uh, if there's any questions, one-on-one -on -one questions you want to ask me, just stick around. Otherwise, you're free to log off and get, um, get on with your next uh, task. Hey, uh, Dr. Maddox, I was, so I was going to ask like two quick questions that mm -hmm. uh, I kind of forgot to ask or kind of just thought of. Uh, so you were saying, I just wanted to make sure uh, for tomorrow's lab, we don't, uh, we don't need to have the Mathematica. It's really for the next week is what you were saying, correct? Like for us to have full access to that? Correct. Okay. And then uh, last thing, um, when it says like topic 1A, B, C, that's all the like exam one material, correct? And like the same for for uh, exam two, like two A through D, just to make sure that's yeah. uh, okay. All right, sweet. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty much everything. So, yeah, once you get your copy of the textbook, this these topic one A, that'll make a lot more sense because that's the first section. Okay. Or, yeah. De mm -hmm. Definitely, that makes sense. All right. Well, uh, thanks for your help. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye.